Hey guys, so in today's video, I just wanted to expose one of the biggest truths when it comes to Forex trading. And that is that you are going to have losing weeks. Not days, but weeks. Now let me give you an overview of what's happened to me this entire week, right? So on Monday, I took a loss. On Tuesday, I took a loss. On Wednesday, I didn't take a loss. I didn't get a trade. On Thursday, I didn't like how price reacted. Therefore, I didn't take a trade. And on Friday, which is today, I took a loss. So for this week, I am negative 3%, right? Just on EURUSD. And I didn't have any winning trades. I saw two trades run away from me. And I saw three trades take me out at a stop loss. Now, if you think about that, any trader who is a novice or who has just begun their trading journey will come into the markets and have a losing week like I have just done and they will start kicking themselves and doubting themselves thinking, what did I do wrong? Where did I go wrong? It must be the strategy. It must be that this is a scam. It must be that this does not work when that is simply not the case. I've backtested this strategy on EURUSD for a very long time and I understand that there will be losing streaks, there will be losing days and I just have to get over that, right? The way I see trading is you have 10 trades, right? Let's just take an example of 10 trades. Now, out of these 10 trades, if you've backtested, you will know that your win rate is, let's just say, 60%. So now out of these 10, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, out of these 10 trades, you know that 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 of these are going to be losers and 6 are going to be winners based off of a 60% win rate, right? Therefore, now that we know that we're going to get at least 4 losers, we don't know when they'll come. They could come consecutively 1, 2, 3, 4. They could come 1 here, 1 here two towards the end, one somewhere in the middle. But we know that we're going to get losses, right? We know that there are going to be losses in this game. They can come consecutively. They can come one after the other. They can come staggered. But we know that there will be losses. And now this is something very key that a lot of traders have yet to master. And it's that even when you're having a losing week, even when you're having that losing streak, you don't give up. You continue trading like you normally would. You take each trade mechanically as you would when it fits your trading criteria. And that is simply more than enough for you to continue to stay profitable. There's no need to chop and change. There's no need to start finding a new strategy because that's not going to do you any good. So sorry for that rant, but let me get that over. Let's jump into this week's analysis. So I'm going to break down these five trades of this week so that we can go over exactly what it is that I was looking at and uh, figure out why either these trades lost. Was it something that I did or was it just a simple fact that the trades just didn't want to go in my favor and they were just simply losses, right? So let's start off on Monday. Actually, you know what? To make the video not as long as other ones, I won't, uh, won't backtest each trade on replay mode. I'll just show you them as I've got them marked up throughout the course of this week. So as we can see on Monday, we've woken up, we've come to the charts and we have now marked up our Asia highs and our Asia lows. And as you can see, we've had a sweep of the Asia highs right there. And after we've had that sweep, we've now broken structure to the downside. So we had a bullish move to the upside. After that, we broke the structure right here. Therefore, we got a market structure shift. And I have my fair value gap marked up right here, which is where I wanted it to take an entry. And this was a beautiful entry, came up, tagged us in and started to drop. Around here, price was up around 4%, I think it was altogether. I did let the group know and uh, I let everyone know that we were going to be getting into the EU sell and we went break even and closed EU and recovered a 2% because I didn't like price action right there. So it was stagnating. I told everyone to close and that was us out at 2% for the week. However, if I hadn't got out a break even, then this would have been a, if I hadn't closed this trade, sorry, I would have got out a break even because I would have moved stops to break even by now. And then overall, this would have been a break even trade. So I'm classing it as a break even trade because the only reason I said to go break even 
was um well the only reason i told everyone to close this trade was because obviously i have my discord so i didn't want anyone to lose money so this is why i said to go break even so if you guys aren't already in the discord feel free to go into the description below hit the link and join us come and say hello talk to us about the forex markets share your strategies your back testing and just generally have a good time enjoying a bunch of amazing people coming together and talking about something that they're passionate about and if you guys are interested in the signals feel free to come over into the signals part and click this link right here in order to gain access we are currently having a massive black friday sale and you can get up to 50 percent off for six months so that is a crazy, crazy offer that will not be ran ever again. So if you guys do want to, feel free to jump into the Discord, come and say hi. But going back to the charts, the other thing that I want to make sure that I stress is make sure that I know what news is coming out and when. Because news can play a very big impact on your trading because then sometimes news is very unpredictable. So for this, I like to use fastball.com. And the reason why I like to use this website is because they have one of the best user interfaces that I've seen in a very long time. So their economic calendar is right here. And not only does it show you what news is coming out and when, but it also tells you how much impact it's going to have. But the other thing that I love the most is that it also tells you what pairs are going to get affected. And once the news comes out, it also tells you how they were affected. So as you can see today, we had this piece of news came out, we got the actual figure and then it was able to tell us that this affected GBP USD in a bullish way. Now you can change the different tickers and we can see that WTI was neutral, so it didn't have that much of an effect. So I love the fact that you're able to see this because sometimes if you're not up to scratch with reading news events then you might not understand what all of these different figures mean so to see it just like this makes it very very easy to read not only that but they also have a news section on their website where you can go to get the most up-to-date news that's coming out all around the world all in one place and it's completely free so this is why I love using this website because I can keep up to track with all of the different news events that are happening all around the world and make sure I know what news is about to come out and for what currency every single day. And not only that, but they also have an app. And the reason why I love this app so much is because I don't always have time to be sat there in front of my computer screens whilst I'm trading. Sometimes I'm on the move and I'm trading on my phone. So this makes it so much easier because then instead of going to an external website, I have the app open in the background and then I can use that alongside TradingView. Okay, so let's jump back straight onto the charts and get back to what it was that we were discussing. So here we are on Tuesday and I've woken up and I've come to the charts and on Tuesday I did have a little bit of a issue and this was something that was completely my fault and that was that my indicator for the sessions was actually set to open asia session at 1 a.m uk time so this was something that was completely my fault and because of this i had the low as being right here so that's why i have this line here and then this was the newly drawn line once i realized my problem however the one big issue that this caused was that when the markets swept right there I took this as a valid sweep of the Asia lows, even though, again, it was wrong. And then when we got this market structure shift, I got in an entry on this fair value gap right here, which was immediately taken out. So I took this loss, but again, I analyzed and I self-reflected and I realized that it was completely my fault. And this was the actual low that I should have waited for, because if I did wait for that low, I would have still had a stop loss. However, the bias was correct, right? So the trade, in fact, did play out. However, unfortunately, due to a error, which is, again, just a normal human error, I took a loss on Tuesday. So now we've gone break even on the Monday. We've taken a loss on the Tuesday. We've woken up on the Wednesday. We've come to the charts. We've marked out our Asia highs and lows. And we've had this crazy push to the downside, right? And when we've had this push to the downside, price has swept the asia lows and it's given us this right here for me this wasn't really a valid trade 
And the reason why I didn't classify it as a valid trade is because I didn't like this market structure shift. I didn't like the way that it was right here, right? I didn't like that it didn't break any valid structural points. And because of this, I didn't actually take this trade. I didn't get in. I wanted an extreme fair value gap because I wanted it to be super tight, right? I saw all of this happening right here. And then I thought, instead of getting in up here, I wanted price to come down to the extreme because of the market structure shift not being as strong as I would like it. Because of this, I actually missed this trade, this beautiful trade that would have been, what was this? This trade was a solid one to four, which would have put us in the running for the week. But unfortunately, I missed it and it was again completely my fault. So I can't. I can't say that I should have taken the trade because I know if I look at this again, it's still not valid for me. So I still wouldn't have taken it. But nonetheless, on Wednesday, it was a missed trade. So now we've had a break even, we've had a loss and we've had a missed trade. So if we keep it moving in a steady fashion and get on to Thursday, again, this was a missed trade where I had the Asia highs, the Asia lows. We've come in. We've swept the Asia highs and then we've got this, which I really didn't like because again, the market structure shift just wasn't valid enough for me. This was the key structure points that I had marked up. This was complex structure, so I didn't really bother with it. Price did in fact come into the fair value gap and drop it like it's hot. So had I taken this trade, I would have been again, another nice 3.6% up. So that would have been about 4, 7% up for the week. But again, I missed this trade and this wasn't something that I would have taken anyway, even in hindsight, because I don't like that market structure shift. And now let's move on to Friday, which we are on today. So we've got the Asia highs and the Asia lows. That was really badly drawn on. And once we get here we can see that we've had this nice sweep right here we've had a break we've had this nice market structure shift which i classified as valid because we've got high 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 low high high break of this higher low giving us a new lower low a lower high push into this fair value gap stops above the high targets at the bottom i thought this was a very a plus setup because the market structure shift was so beautiful sweep of the asia highs into the fair value gap and unfortunately we got taken out right so that's another loss for the week so that's two losses two missed trades and one break even so nothing good this week right i had nothing good losses break evens missed trades and continuously throughout the week i was just thinking it's just another trade, right? I wasn't sat there going, oh, this strategy is rubbish. Or I wasn't sat there going, oh my God, I'm doing something wrong. I have to change this. I have to change that. No, I just sat there. I analyzed all the trades. I figured out my mistakes in some of them. I went back and checked, even in hindsight, if I would have taken the trades and I still wouldn't have. So I stick by not taking this one and not taking this one. So I analyzed myself. I checked over what I'd done. It all fit the plan. So I'm not going to sit here and kick myself down because I realized that losses are inevitable. Come next week, I'm sure we'll have a super profitable week and we'll make back all the losses that we've taken this week. So there's the breakdown of the week. I hope you guys had uh, some good insight into exactly what it was that I was thinking throughout the scope of this week. And I hope you gained some good insight. If you did, please don't forget to go down, hit the like and comment also subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you guys in the next video.